Hello, hello. Welcome to Courage Becomes Her, where we connect and share real life stories. I'll talk with women whom I love and I'm inspired by women who are experiencing life just like you and me. I'm excited for us to gather together and cultivate confidence, courage, and joy in life and work. The Hiding Place by Corey Ten Boom was a game changer for me. She talked about how being in the concentration camp, they had bug infestation and that she kept asking the Lord, why would you allow this to happen? And then came to find out that it was that bug infestation of their camp that caused the soldiers not to sexually assault them. And how sometimes what we see as the worst in our life is being used to protect us. That there's just a larger story at play. And it shaped the way that I saw every negative in my life and that I see that because whenever something just doesn't make sense, I go back to that story and I'm reminded, I just don't see the full picture, but I know I have a God who loves me and that he will bring purpose out of it. That was Dr. Drea Ramirez. Drea and I have known one another since 2009. And do you have one of those friends where you just look at her in amazement and say, Oh my gosh, you are just seriously a powerhouse woman. That is my friend Drea, and you are going to love getting to know her today. Drea has been a corporate executive for as long as I've known her, and even before that, she has worked for the White House, for the U.S. Department of Education. She's been an advisor to Harvard University and Rice University. She's been on the board for I think two different universities and she has her PhD in organizational leadership and her MBA. She's been an advisor for Hispanic Americans for education uh, initiatives regarding Hispanics. And I'm just constantly wowed by Drea. I am blown away by all that she has done in her career, but I'm more blown away by how much of an awesome wife and mom that she is. And today you're going to hear her talk about uh, back to school and what it looks like to thrive in the back to school season with two daughters and being a busy working mom, corporate executive mom who travels as well as having a husband who regularly travels. So I'm excited for you to join us today with this conversation with Dr. Drea. I am so excited to have my longtime friend, Dr. Andrea Ramirez, or Dr. Dre, with us on Courage Becomes Her today. So thank you so much for being with us today, Andrea. Thanks for having me. Yay. I'm so excited. So back to school time, and you and your husband are both full-time very busy working at, and you've got a second grader and a sixth grader this year. So would love to talk about just what are, you know, some of the tips and tricks, if you will, some of the things that you guys do to make back to school successful, uh, just knowing, especially how, you know, busy you are both with working full time and traveling, which we can talk a little bit more about in a minute, but just some of those you know, kind of uh, main things to help help back to school be successful. Yeah, we really try to be intentional in our home when it comes to back to school, making that a time where we're inviting our kids to love the Lord with all their mind. It's a scripture mm-hmm. that we see in both the Old Testament and the New Testament. And New Jesus talks about loving the Lord with all your heart, strength, soul, and mind. And so even from the time that they were four, three, four, and five, we talked to them about loving the Lord with all of their minds and what that meant in terms of school. So that school was something that they could do their very best and work unto the Lord. And so Mm -hmm. it's something that for all of us, we would want to be reminded. And so we put that in front of them a lot, Um, but there is quite a bit of intentionality in our time with them. 
Yeah, I love that so much. You guys always have been very intentional. Give us an idea of what it, what does some of that intentionality look like? Yeah, so we kick off every year with two sort of family rituals, I should say, sort of traditions. One is we take pictures um, with each daughter and it says, you know, I'm in the sixth grade. And so they, we stand them up and try to make them laugh and really help them to know that it's the beginning of a chapter for them. And, and then the second thing that we do is my husband makes a video for them and has them, um, their backs are faced to the recording. So you can see his face, but he basically speaks a blessing over them. And Mm -hmm. he's very specific and that blessing kind of teases them with information of things that they're going to learn in that next year. So he may say, you know, fractions are on the horizon for you this year in fourth grade, or you're going to be studying in Latin in sixth grade. And so he's very specific with helping cast vision for them and blessing for them and letting them know, reminding them of being confident in who they are and whose they belong to, um, to be kind to others, to know that they walk with favor and that Mm. the Lord is um, paving the way for them and that they go with our love. And so we just really firmly believe in speaking blessing over them. And so we try to start off with those two family traditions every year. And then we pray together as a family each night. And so we, we talk about things that are on their minds this year for our youngest, Ava, who's going into the second grade, we started reading a book about the second grade, the first day Mm. of second grade. And so we did that for two weeks beforehand. Uh, So she knew the book well by the time she started that first day. But we talked about things that she can expect and reminders of what you learn in the second grade and just tried to boost her confidence level and knowing that she kept telling us that she was nervous. She said, I'm just nervous. I feel like second grade such a big deal, you know? And so wow. we unpacked that a little bit to say, you know, help us to know what's making you nervous about this and try to encourage her and ease her, her concerns around that. I love that. You, you guys are always so like inspirational and motivational. I can just imagine, you know, being with your girls and you fly on the wall and watching and just hearing, uh, you know, your words of affirmation and, and being so encouraging to them and helping them to like set them at ease and get them excited. So I love that. Well, something that I've noticed they seem to respond really well to is at night when we're about to pray, I try to look each one in the eye and say something specific to what their strengths are and what their gifts are Mm. to say like, Eden, I see that you have a heart for people and that you genuinely care about those around you. And you speak truth into places where people are nervous or it seems gray or there's confusion. And so what I'll try to do is help her and both of them, um, but individually help them to identify what those strengths are about Mm -hmm. themselves. Because I think our kids are in a season where they want to be just like everyone else and not be noticed or not stand out. And I want them to know that they can celebrate the strengths of others around them and hold in their hands what makes them unique. I love that. That's so beautiful. Absolutely love that. So um, you and Fabian both travel a lot. Fabian travels a lot. So what does back to school look like for you knowing, you know, that he, Fabian in particular is gone quite a bit. You have a, a fair bit of travel as well. Yeah. We have something that we do with our girls and we ask them, what do you know for sure? What do you know for sure? Even if we're traveling, even if there are schedules are different from week to week, what are the things that you know for sure? And we let them voice that. And they'll say things like, we know that you love us. Mm -hmm. We know that, that you love each other. We Mm -hmm. know that God made us, you know, they voice those absolute evergreen truths. I think we try to 
really prepare them, like walk them through what the next 48 or 72 hours will be. Mm. And we have checkpoints throughout the day. Um, They typically are going to be with a parent or a grandparent. And so we will walk them through to say, you know, dad's going to leave on Sunday afternoon. And then there'll be two nights where he's gone and he'll come back and pick you up on this day. So I think helping them look at a calendar, helping them know what to expect. We use Marco Polo. It's a very practical tool with our kids, but we found that FaceTime and Marco Polo when you're traveling helps them to know they have a touch point with us um, in real time. And so we use Marco Polo to ask about days and to, and even if they want to send us fun little videos and random questions. It gives us the opportunity to touch base with them all throughout the day. I think that where we are able to involve them in travel, we try to. So like, for example, next week, both of the girls will travel with me and they get to kind of have an an inside look into what it's sort of a, a new rendition of take your kids to work day. Um, but they get to see what we're doing with when we're away. And with Fabian, he's involved Eden in speaking at the schools. So she really has a deep respect as far as when he says, I'm going to go and speak three times at a school. She knows what that means because she's been the one that has closed out for him in the past. So I think we really try to invite them into our work experience so that they get hands-on um, like a front row seat, but yeah. also see themselves involved in that. That's so good. I mean, obviously for some parents, a lot of parents, that's not possible, but what, what would you say to encourage some parents to try that out? Like maybe the first time that you guys, that Fabian took Eden or that you took either of the girls with you, like, how did you, how did you test it out to see if it would work? Yeah. When we first started traveling with the girls, our bar was a little bit lower. Okay. Because we felt like if we make it to the hotel, (laughs) (laughs) we success, right? Or like if we make it to the event and they meet one person and have an an adult interaction that is positive and we teach them to look at adults in the eyes and to realize that teachers are people and ask them how their day is going. And Mm -hmm. um, then that's success. And so we built on that little by little. So initially, for example, Eden would speak for one minute and then she started speaking two minutes. And this last summer was the first time that she did a full mini speech that she worked on. And, and I was so proud of her, you know, she's 11 and she spoke to 500 freshmen in high school. Incredible. But it was those little steps. And I think when it comes to travel, we basically have, we have rules to travel. So like my youngest knows when we walk through an airport, she's supposed to stand between my oldest daughter and Mm. me at all times. And Mm. so when she moves out of that sequence, we remind her, Hey, where are you supposed to be? You're supposed to be between your sister and I. And so there are small things that we do that help them to know we're going to set you up for success, but we're called to do these things and we're called to be your parents and the Lord will give us a path to do that together. And so sometimes that means that we're going to travel together and let's talk about what that looks like. Mm -hmm. So we do try to prep them. Like we're going to go up to the gate. They're going to ask you what your age is. They're going to ask you. So we do a lot of prep work yeah. actually. Yeah. Wow. That's so good. I love that. I think thankfully we're, we've entered into a season where that is becoming more of an option for parents to involve, but I think there probably are a lot who just don't even know how to start, where to start that sort of thing. So I love, you know, just the baby steps really that you guys have implemented. So good. The um, going back to kind of when you're not able to have them travel with you, like 
a couple of years ago, you guys lived near family. You don't live near family anymore. So how are you navigating like that component of it, of not having family nearby and able to really kind of jump in at a moment's notice? Yeah, it's, it is a ton of planning. I mean, we have many business meetings for our couple time. (laughs) We will sit down with the calendar and say, when will you be out? What can I say yes to versus what can you say yes to? My folks, you know, we're so thankful that they'll come up many times and we'll Mm -hmm. um, be with the girls. We try to think through when grandparents will be here. And that way we can work to say yes to certain events or to work with Fabian's booking manager. And so I think that we make every effort to have either one of us or a grandparent. Occasionally there'll be, I've done life with three women who are so wonderful and we've done life together for 20 years. And um, my children did not know that they were not biological aunts until wow. well up to their grade school years. And I think Ava has figured it out maybe within the last year. Those women at times have stepped in to be a part of that support system. But I think that we are also comfortable saying no to certain mm-hmm. opportunities because we do know that we're called to to parent these two wonderful children together and that that means that there are going to be opportunities that we're just not going to be able to bring into the fold. And where that does happen, we really, our focus is to suggest colleagues or suggest others who can step in, who we know will bless the client or bless the opportunity. And so there's a a deep privilege in being able to bring new voices to those opportunities as well. Um, But that's, that is how we have tackled it. Yeah. I love that. Courage Becomes Her is brought to you in part by my coaching, Laurel Emery and Company. And I'm excited to tell you that in the month of October, I have openings for three new clients, women, business owners, or entrepreneurs, uh, or business executives. So If you have any interest, please reach out to me in the show notes is my contact information. I would love to hear from you. The preparation component is so important. And I think, you know, for those who are married and have kids and, you know, being intentional, as you said, about sitting down together, going through the calendar, like having those quote unquote business dates, if you will, like what a, um, helpful piece to really make sure that you're setting yourselves and your kids up for success. So I just love that. I think it is setting yourself up for success. So very much of being able to really plan ahead and have that organized. I love too, that you talked about like making sure that you have community, creating community around you. And that for people who don't have family nearby, such an important element of making sure that you know, if something comes up that you have somebody that the girls trust and they know that, okay, in the event of an emergency, you know, these two people are authorized to pick you up or, you know, whatever the case may be. So love that. There is a young woman that I've been mentoring for about a year and a half, and she has become an extension of our family. The Mm -hmm. girls know her, um, she knows where all the keys are and Mm. all the codes, And she has been a part of our support system through that as well. And so I do think creating what you, you know, I mean, we come from a creator and so it is natural for us to create. And I think being intentional about creating what you want for your life and for your children Mm. is I think intentionality and planning and ensuring that anything that doesn't fit is pruned out. Yeah. That's so good. Yeah. Such an important thing, especially in our hustle culture of being able to say like, okay, I need to say no to this and need to have these plans in place. So I love that. So good. You prior to your current role had been in a couple of roles where you were working 70, 80, 90, 100 hours a week even. 
I know that that season, thankfully, is over for you at the at the moment, at least, or not this current season. But back to school during those seasons, like, was there any one thing in particular that maybe was different for you in that season that you would like encourage, especially let's say the entrepreneurial mom who is starting up a business and is, you know, just tons and tons of hours or the executive mom who, you know, like you had been doing, you know, just couldn't, couldn't shut off, you know, couldn't unplug because of the demands of the role. Was there anything in particular in that season? Yeah. I, I mean, a few things, one, it was messy and I think I had to like, life was messy during that time. Yeah. And I, I had to reach a point where I let go of the pressure of balance. And I really leaned into asking the Lord to help me to know what my children needed, what they were saying without saying, like what they were communicating their needs were and working on um, engaging the heart. Mm -hmm. And so maximizing the time, I think debriefing their day with them, if that meant, walking away and giving them a call and debriefing their day to say, you know, what was the best part of your day? What was Mm -hmm. the part where you were sad or confused um, and talking through that? I think as I reflect back, the kicking off the, the school year, we've done those two family traditions, but from day to day, we try to pray in the morning together and then in the evening together. And sometimes it's not all four of us. Sometimes it's me praying with the girls or Fabian praying with the girls. But even when there were late nights, there were times where Fabian would come and I would hop in the car with them and we would make three circles around the building where we could pray together, where I could hold their hands and where we could talk about how they were doing. So sometimes we had to get creative with how we, got that face-to-face time. And then I would, I would ask them to help me to know what would be meaningful to them. Mm -hmm. And so my oldest daughter was seven, eight years old, and she would ask for us to do our nails together, Mm where she would say, I really want time where you and I can walk around without anyone else. And so Mm -hmm. I would try to honor those requests, but it wasn't, it wasn't perfect by any means of the imagination. I mean, it was, I really, I, I asked the Lord to help fill in the gaps where I knew that I physically was exhausted Mm -hmm. or, or emotionally taxed. And so my priority was helping them to know that, that they were always being thought of, that they were always front of mind, that Mm -hmm. I was serving our country and serving the Lord and felt called to that, but that it wasn't a forever season. And so trying to communicate, this is a way that I can serve our nation to help your generation in the future. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be an end date to this particular season. Yeah, I love that. Birthdays are a big deal in our household. So we plan for birthday parties for several months. And that was sort of a part of our bonding experience was um, getting on Pinterest and picking out or Amazon and picking out different themes and favors and making the list. It was sort of like event planning. Yeah. And they both have seemed to really enjoy that. That's so good. I love just even when you only had say five minutes, just the touch point of the phone call or Fabian circling the building so that you could hop in the car for a few minutes and, and that, yeah. And just finding those times, making those times, even, I think that sometimes parents can discount that. Like it has to be like this big grandiose thing, or like, if I can't have dinner or I can't put them to bed, then I'm not going to do anything at all. So I love that. It's like, no, you just, you take whatever opportunity that you have in those crazy busy seasons. We did quite a bit of FaceTime during that time as well. Mm-hmm. And anytime I couldn't physically be there uh, to put them to bed, we still prayed together by phone or by FaceTime. And so there was built in consistency, even if it was, not ideal at times, 
Yeah. They knew that for us, it was important that they knew that our faith in Christ was something that no matter what the season looks like, that's a priority and that connecting with them, um, not just as children, but something we talk about often is reminding them that we love them as people and that Mm. today they're 11 and seven. And so we celebrate that. That's great. They've been eight and four. That's wonderful. But what we love is not their life stage. We love them. And I Mm. see so many, the temptation for parents to love a stage. And then Mm. when their children change from that stage, they lament that and they miss them as babies or they miss them as children. And that makes, it's natural to miss your children. Sure. And you know, they're so precious and so cute and all those things, but I want them to know at the end of the day, it's them that we love yeah. as they are cycling through different phases and seasons. That's such an interesting difference, a different perspective of way of looking at that. I love that. Thank you. What, uh, anything else that you would share that we haven't talked about yet that have just, you know, making the school year and back to school a successful and good experience for parents and kids? <laughs> the things that come to mind are one, we, we also talk about that the older that they get, the closer that will become. And mm-hmm. so we're trying to cast vision on you're going to enter your teenage stages and, and puberty is coming and we want you to know that the older you get, the closer we'll be. We we are not going to walk into or lean into the narrative that because you're a teenager, we have to have mm. this um, strained relationship. In fact, we invite you to help us to know where you're at in this season. And that has been super freeing for a preteen, I think, as she has communicated different emotions and questions, knowing that I have no interest in keeping her a child or, Mm -hmm. and I want her to grow, but I want her to ask those questions and for us to dialogue about what those emotions look like. Something that we've tried to do is to ensure that we have a fresh start in terms of even wardrobe and Mm -hmm. um, new pencils and just a few, everything doesn't have to be new, but we try to, at least have two or three new outfits to communicate this is a new beginning. And so we want you to to have some physical representation of that. We do have quite a few lists (laughs) that are are helpful to us, checklists and um, routines of what our morning routine looks like, what our nighttime Mm -hmm. routine looks like. When you get home, there are certain places where you put your jacket, your backpack. And and I think when life gets hyper packed, those routines seem to give them a sense of stability. And it's something that we as parents can do, but grandparents can implement as well. So what I have found is writing it down, laminating it, or putting it in a place where everyone in the home can see it has been helpful. Wow, that's awesome. Yep, that's so good. Their uh, former client of mine does um, lists. I'll put a link in the show notes for Whitney English. So she does all these actual checklists for parents to have that are basically like that, the things that you are templated, if you will, so you don't forget stuff. So I love that. I'm so, so good. Thank you. I appreciate it so much. So love to ask just a few of the more rapid fire get to know you types of questions. So you know that I am all about Enneagram and we've talked a little bit about it and we've talked about love language as well. So tell me a little bit about your Enneagram and what you resonate with and love language. So I am a three. Um, I tried to trick the test to not <laughs> come out a three. Of course you got a stronger three. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I, I resonate with threes quite a bit. I have to remind myself not to start off every day at zero, There's to start off at five or, or just not zero, um, because that drive is so uh, ingrained and just a part of who I am. So identity in Christ, as opposed to the output of my life mm-hmm. is so key to me to know that 
who I am is, is reflective of the fact that I get to know Jesus Christ as Lord and mm-hmm. Savior. So as far as love languages, I'm words and uh, words of affirmation and quality time. And um, my husband's is acts of service is number one. That's mm-hmm. my lowest. Okay. So that's been creative. We've had to yeah. be creative in communicating to one another our love. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Good for you guys for exploring that. Cause it is, it's hard when you are opposite of one another like that. Corey and I are opposite of one another as well. So totally understand that. Uh, what's something that you're obsessing about lately? A book, a show, a podcast, food, just some current obsession. So we are loving making pumpkin bread at our Ooh. house. We've been baking quite a bit. My youngest, Ava, loves baking. And so um, we are the kind that are waiting for the banana to get ripe enough. And like every day is exciting. Like, is it mushy enough to do that banana bread? So I would say baking is something that we definitely are enjoying these days. I love it. So do, are you guys into watching the Great British Baking Show together or any other of the food shows? The girls love um, any baking competitions, like cake yeah. competitions, and um, they like to create like homemade baking competitions here. Ooh, I get super be, fun. Yeah, I get to be the um, contestant, the unwilling contestant to those. <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> uh, have you guys watched Is It Cake yet? together yes okay we love that we love that's such a cute it, one yeah because you don't know if it's a utensil or if it's cake and yeah it's yeah so fun yeah I love that one yeah we've had a good time watching that one so I know that you um have found laughter to be such a healthy and good part of life so tell me something that's made you laugh in the last 24 hours or filled your cup metaphorically speaking in some way So I got the great privilege of going to high school and being in the same youth group as Nate Bargatze, who is a comedian now on Netflix, and he's on The Tonight Show a lot. And he was making us laugh way back when. And I so enjoy hearing his stand up. I mean, Mm. it causes me to relax and laugh in a way that's just so different and highly recommend all of his comedy. Awesome. I love that. I, I have, I know you have mentioned him to me before and I need to need to go and check him out for sure. Uh, what book has been most transformational or transformative for you in your life? So, um, the hiding place by Corey mm-hmm. Ten Boom was a game changer for me. She talked about having, um, how being in the concentration camp, they had um, bug infestation Mm -hmm. and that she kept asking the Lord, why would you allow this to happen? And then came to find out that it was that um, bug infestation of their camp that caused the soldiers not to sexually assault them Mm -hmm. and how sometimes what we see as the worst in our life is being used to protect us or provision or um, that there's just a larger story at play. And it shaped the way that I saw every negative in my life. um, And that I see that because whenever something just doesn't make sense, I go back to that story and I'm reminded I just don't see the full picture, but I know I have a God who loves me and that um, he will bring purpose out of it. Mm, It's so good. Yeah, so true. I love that. Thank you. Uh, Last question. What was the first concert you ever went to? I think it was DC Talk. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) uh, I'm definitely a kid of the late 80s, early 90s, and um, loved Christian concerts back in, in that season. And DC talk was just the coolest of the cool. Yep. Um, and then I went to Kenny Chesney cause I grew up in middle Tennessee mm-hmm. right outside of Nashville. And 
Um, I went to a Kenny Chesney concert that just was phenomenal. It just so much energy and so Mm -hmm. fun. Um, So that's another one that stands out. I love it. Super fun. Thank you so much. Appreciate you being with us and uh, passing on some really fabulous and helpful tips for parents who are navigating back to school. And I think, I mean, a lot of these are tips that you can put into practice as a parent anytime, doesn't even need to be back to school. So I appreciate that so much and so grateful that you uh, joined us today. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So good to be with you and to see you. Thank you. Gosh, what a great conversation. You are probably going to get sick of me saying it, but I am just so grateful for the women that we are talking with and uh, that we get the opportunity to meet and to get to know and to be inspired by and encouraged by and to learn from. I am just blessed beyond measure to know these women. I'm so grateful that Dr. Drea came on today with us and shared just some wonderful insights and wisdom and tips for us. I have long admired she and her husband Fabian for the way that they parent. I've been able to uh, see them as parents from day one and have just really uh, enjoyed watching their intentionality with their girls. I just love how they're visionary with their girls and help to invite their girls into uh, the bigger picture of life and uh, to help their girls to see that they are special and that they are unique and that Andrea and Fabian speak blessings and affirmations over the girls, just helping to uh, create life and uh, speak life into their, into their daughter's I love the special traditions that they've created for the beginning of the school year. And gosh, um, isn't the idea of having your kids travel with you just the coolest ever? Like, I want to be their kids and go travel with them. (laughs) So awesome. I really love how Drea and Fabian uh, support one another in their careers while also just staying so committed to one another and to their girls. Uh, It just is such a beautiful model for other married couples to uh, be able to follow. So I'm just so grateful that we had Dr. Drea with us today. If you'd like to connect with her, uh, you are more than welcome to do so. She would welcome a reach out if you want to talk about life as a busy executive woman who also is trying to Uh, just be the best mom that she can be. Uh, Her contact information is in the show notes. So she would, again, just welcome your reach out. And uh, we talked through quite a few different resources today that would be helpful for you. Those are also in the show notes for you so that you can uh, link to those uh, books and other things that we discussed and have those at your fingertips. So I'm so grateful that you joined us for this wonderful conversation with Dr. Drea today. And uh, Drea, thank you for your time and your wisdom. Thank you all so much. What an honor to help you to cultivate confidence, courage, and joy in your life and work. Thank you so much for inviting me to journey with you. I look forward to being back with you next week where we'll hear another story from a woman whom I love and am inspired by and look forward to learning from. Thank you.